So we actually just walked down the street from Stephanie's house. We were checking out this other graveyard. Look at all those omelets, guys. Look at that one. Look at that sucker. Makes you wonder what they're harnessing here. It makes you wonder how many of these omelets were already here before a cemetery was built. I don't even know what cemetery this is, guys, because I've never been in here. Well, look at this. So we do this in the south a lot on graves. Or he will put like rocks and stuff. Uh -huh. Sometimes they'll put toys. I actually know that family. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep. Well, they do it that's to appease. That's a local family. They do it to appease the dead. Yeah, that's interesting. That's big in the I south. I actually, I probably know a lot of these families because this is such a small town. And even the surrounding areas are very small townish, so everybody knows everybody. And I worked in a doctor's office, so guess what? I know a lot of the local major families that live here. It's a huge graveyard. Yeah. I've always wanted to walk in here, so. This is your first time? Yeah. We're doing this together? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Any type of Catholic shit really freaks me out. I know all the churches are bad, but the Catholic stuff really gets me. Yep. There's a Barry family. Yep, I know the Frederick. Some of them. Um, there's a Patton over here. Well, there's lots of pat. Oh, see, look, they brought alcohol. This is big in the south, too. Well, if it's the same Frederick family, I know that actually makes a lot of sense. <laughs> hey, whatever. they like to ha they they're not alcoholics, they just like to have a good time sometimes. Same if it's the same Frederick family I'm thinking of. Same, same, same time, same. Yeah, we do that a lot in the south. I know the La Flamme, I know some of the La Flammes. Actually, the Adams that I do know is a freaking crazy person. <laughs> I worked with her. Fun. I left because of her. Oh. <laughs> that Adams. There's a good, oh yeah. There's good crazy and there's bad crazy. Oh, this one really loves Elvis. There's an engagement ring too. Hmm. Is that like Coast Guard? Um, take a look at this. There we go, Freemasonry. We have a Freemason Lodge, guys, right near my house. Yep. And interestingly enough, in the last couple months, it has been, um, they've been removing everything out of the lodge. Yep. So there is stuff in this area. You will find it in your own backyard. Just go and look. I mean, this is a tiny, in all, in all honesty, this is probably the smallest town I've ever been in in my whole life. Yeah. It's a tiny town. I didn't town. grow up in a tiny, tiny town, but I grew up. 20 minutes south of Hartford, so this is actually this was culture shock to me when I came out here too. What I'm saying is, even though this is such a tiny town, we're still seeing the same stuff. So that's what we keep saying: just go look in your own backyard. It's such a your... tiny town that I recognize names on plot out of <laughs> I know the Perrys. <laughs> is that Rakowski? Yeah. Is that, is that Polish Rakowski? Yeah. What? Yeah, we don't have many Polish people in the South. These south are is... definite, oh, there's a lot of stones that look very um, Civil War-ish almost here. Are these real though? <laughs> at least the we ones walk... yesterday were not real. Yeah, at least we can walk through this graveyard. I know when this goes up, we might not have had our Salem video up yet, but yeah, there's some fake graves in Salem. <laughs> look at that monstrosity right there. I'm thinking that was probably already here. Just common sense would tell me that was probably already here. I should take a look into the person who it is for. There's um, some graves over here. Look, they're, mar they're marked off. I mean, there's so many obelisks. This is a huge graveyard. Now again, we've learned through some of our own investigations that maybe perhaps allegedly we should not be burying our dead. Um, that the dead should actually be cremated. Why is this? Is because fragments of the soul get stuck in the fascia and in the bones. And so when someone is put underground, it harnesses what's left of that soul in that body. And um, some of these obelisks, we know we're already here because the obelisk itself is not bad, inherently bad. But um, we think the controllers are using the obelisk to harness the energy the life force of the bodies that are left in these graves. So 
That to me means part of like when the Bible speaks about getting your light body back. In my opinion, I think that's kind of what that means is that if we have bodies buried somewhere else from past lives and fragments of our soul are still left in those bodies, we'll get them returned to us once the matrix collapse collapses. Get this obelisk. It's an old one. That is an old one. So yeah, where Stephanie lives in Berlin, we're really close to the Massachusetts state line, hence why we were able to go into Salem pretty quickly and pretty easily, Plymouth yesterday. Boston, we went through Boston. Um, that ob obelisk looks pretty new. I guess this is the older part of the cemetery back here. I don't know where Stephanie went. Just kind of wandering by myself. It's cool, I'm from the South. <laughs> we wander through cemeteries a lot in the South. But I really want Stephanie to come to my family's hometown at some point in Charleston, South Carolina, because honestly, I have not seen the amount of history here that is in Charleston or in Savannah or any part of the Deep South. The Deep South is loaded in way more history than I have seen up here in the Northeast, like hands down. So it makes you kind of wonder, is that really Egypt? That map we've, we found with showing the real Egypt being the Southeast, is that why there's so much more potency down in the Southeast? And especially if we're, we're working with the, the idea, the theory that the Mississippi Rivi River, the mighty Mississippi, is really the Nile, then that would make New Orleans, Alexandria, where the missing library of Alexandria should be, which would make sense. That's why New Orleans is probably super, super potent if it was actually Alexandria. Because from, my, from what I understand, it may be perhaps the days of Atlantis or Tartaria, stuff that we would be, we would consider like witchcraft in our timeline was probably just basic science to them. Basic science. This is how this is done. This is how that is done. This is what you do for this. You know, I mean, I get called a witch just because I practice yoga in our timeline. I've been called a witch because I practice Ayurvedic eating that I, I, I only eat for my dosha, which to me makes absolute sense because the body is energy. It's all energy and food is energy. And so if you're not matching the appropriate energy with your, with your energy, then you're gonna have a fucked up digestive system, right? So like I'm Vata Pitta, so I can't eat grapes, as you guys saw. I can't eat Vata foods because I have too much Vata in me. That's why I'm bony. That's why I have the propensity to get really skinny is because I'm Vata and I'm pit, my Pitta, Pitta is fire. So that's why I'm really active and that's why I'm athletic, that's why I enjoy moving and doing things is because that's the pitta. The pitta is the fire. What I'm missing, what I'm lacking is the kappa energy. And kappa is earth. It's, it's harder for me to ground. So how do I ground? Well, it's not just doing grounding exercises. It's eating earth-based foods. Sweet potatoes. Cooked carrots. Things that come from the earth. It's also like if I were to want to do a fast as a vata pitta, fasting for me is going to look very different than someone who is like kappa pitta or kappa vata because I as a vata have to, I, my hunger signals when I get hungry, usually what happens is before my stomach even growls is I start to space out. I get spacey. So with that being said, it, it's for someone who's kappa, they can go hours without eating and be fine. That's not me. Although as a vata, I do forget to eat from time to time. So when we start to work with our own energy, we understand food is energy. It just, it's just common sense at that point. It just makes sense. It's not witchcraft. It just makes sense. It's just you're working with nature. You're working with your energy. So anyway, went off on a little bit of a tangent there. My opinion is back in Atlantis times, Tartarian times, all of this stuff was common knowledge and was considered science. We know that science in days of yorn was basically the priest, the priest, or also the doctors. 
most the scientists because spirituality and science should match each other. They shouldn't be apart from each other. Oh, here's another one. Here's another Freemason. That's weird. It says the guy's name and then his wife. I mean, granted, if I was married to a man I really loved, I would want to be called his wife. Like, that would be important to me. But, um, I would want him to be also labeled as my husband. I had a really interesting conversation last night with an older gentleman who came by to the bonfire about intimate relationships with adults. And he was asking me, he was like, do you ever just, you know, have sex? And I was like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. He was like, why? There's a difference between making love and having sex. And I was like, no, there isn't. No, there isn't. It is all energy. And I am not about to share my energy with someone unless I know that they are monogamously sharing their energy with me. It's an exchange of energy. It's karmic. Anyway. All right, guys, here's another old part. There's Stephanie. This is real old back here. I'm all sweaty. Um, did you see these? Yeah, I just saw them. They all have faces on them. Wait, what? Faces. Like heads. Like from. Oh, that's so creepy. And all the way back, they all have Holy them. Holy shit, that's creepy. Look at that please, one that's like. Please cremate me. Yeah. I'm t are you hear, oh, Stephanie is my witness. Y'all are my witnesses. If something happens to me, do not let my mama bury me. Yeah, um, I'll tell her. You I do not created. consent. Just, just burn my body. Like, I do not. I do not want to get my freaking body stuck. My soul stuck. Fragments. Not, not the whole soul. Though they can't trap the whole soul. Maybe that's what soul trapping is. I don't know. I know we've heard people talk about that, but I um, I talked to uh, a spirit named Ben. 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 I heard him say his name is Ben. Um. He didn't know he was dead, so I told him he could go to the light. He saw it. That's Bruh. Why, that's why my pen went out. Boo, you did. Because I wanted to make sure I was hearing correctly. Where was Ben located? Where's his grave? He was back over here. Yo, look how old these things are. I mean, they have American flags back here, but honestly, how do they know who these people are? To put a flag, and I'm assuming those other red flags are Coast Guard flags? Is that the Coast Guard that we've seen around some of the graves? Yeah. But they all have these faces on them. Yeah, this see? looks almost like they pulled it from something else and made a tombstone. He died in 1794. Mud flood. Yeah. Mud flood. 1790, this dude or girl. I don't know. Those are animals. But they all have weird faces, like head and face on them. Okay, that's an old sucker. Yeah. Wait a minute. What? Okay, I know from researching the old Trinity Church, these things are actually to tie up horses, is what they tell us. But with this, this actually looks like it's the top of a building. Yeah, it actually does. I, I haven't, I've said that multiple times since I've been here, haven't I, Stephanie? That this whole place is like, I feel like this just, there's, it's almost like what Pompeii in Italy. It's almost like if we were to just excavate all over Brooklyn, Connecticut, there's probably a whole freaking Tartarian town. We should do a deep dive into Pompeii. Yeah, that's a good idea. What actually happened with Pompeii? Was that what they said it was? Was that an actual volcano? Or was it the fucking mud flood? Because we know our history is nothing but fairy tales. It's nothing but fairy tales. I had a bright idea. I don't know if the town will allow it to come here tonight. Well, they say, my mama taught me this growing up, sometimes it is better to ask for forgiveness than permission. We can, if we can figure out the name of this graveyard, we can look and see if there's any like Reddit forums of for people have, who've had experiences here. Mm. This graveyard does not feel as heavy as like Myrtle Hill. No. And LOL to the graveyard in uh, Salem. That didn't even feel like a freaking graveyard. 
Yeah, that was the most pathetic thing I've ever seen. It really was pretty pathetic, wasn't it? Yeah. I can't wait for you guys to see all that stuff from Salem. Even some parts of this even feels kind of fake to me. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, they died. She died in what? 1833. Departed. But when was she born? It has no no birth date. Is that because she was like what a thousand years old? Maybe. Was she Tartarian? This woman died in. Well, they say aged forty three. She was only thirty. Well, I have oh, sorry. They have their ages. I don't believe that though. I just She's there's. Thirty four. Shit's not acting up. Adding up. Acting up. Adding up. Shit's not adding up. God, it just goes back and back and back, doesn't it? This one. She's three years old, 1838. Marla Cole. I like the name Marla. You don't hear that name that much. Marla. Well, when we get back to your house, we can talk to him. Do you know you're dead? The little boy, there's a little boy in Stephanie's house. He's four years old. He's dead. His name is Andrew. He told me his name. Um, I woke up one night and he was standing at the edge of the couch, just kind of staring at me. <laughs> he doesn't know he's dead. But the thing is like, this is the hard thing with, with like young spirits like that is like, you don't want to be like, yo, you're dead. You don't want to traumatize them. And I don't even know if four years old you really even understand death at that, at that time. But I picked up that he died from tuberculosis, as did his parents. And so I just, I think he's looking for his mom. And he's just in Stephanie's house because there's a family there. It's kind of nice. They have a little, they have a little bench over here. Eight, that says 1892 over there. Oh, it swings. <laughs> All right, guys, you see that little um, door over there? It kind of goes into the earth. It just says 1892. I'm sure most people assume it's probably a tomb. Yeah. But like... uh, we were just wondering, or Stephanie just brought, does it go into an underground town? Because there's no, let's go over, let's go closer. Because there's no markings over there to say if, if it would be like, an, um, what are they called? My mind's going like mausoleum. mausoleum. Um, wouldn't there be a family name? Yeah. Ooh, there was something sticky on that bench I just sat on. Uh oh. I think it's like tree sap. Could be. My butt's sticky now. Yeah, that's fucking weird. It is fucking weird. Oh, I wonder if we can see in. Like, how do you even open this? I don't think we do. We need to divine on that. What the fuck is this? We need to figure out the name of this cemetery so we can do some, uh, when we get back to your house, let's just look up cemeteries in Brooklyn. Yeah. These are some newer graves back here. These small obelisks look like short fat wieners. Mm -hmm. All right, should we head back? Yeah. 